Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to solve Accenture pseudocode questions and answer. We are going to discuss some previous year questions. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing first, for the people who are going to comment on this video, the top three commenters will get Prepinsta Prime for free. So you can let us know uh, if this video is helpful for you. And uh, also there are more than 30 plus companies are going to hire this placement season. So get all the updates related to this placement, do follow us on Instagram, WhatsApp, Discord, LinkedIn and Telegram. All the links are given in the description of the video. So without further ado, let's get started for the first question that we have. So here's the first question about like what will be the output of the following C code. So basically in the pseudocode, you can expect some instructions or a proper C code where we have to solve it and you have to pick the correct answer that we have. So if you want to solve this, let's say the first line that we have x is set to zero. So we will create a variable x and set it as zero. Then n to one means we have variable n and the value that we are going to assign is a one. In that uh, we have a condition, we have a while loop where it will iterate till n value is less than 100. And in that iteration, we are going to add this x value with the value of n. So that means in the first iteration, we are going to do x equal to the current value of x is 0, current value of n is 1. So this is what the addition here we will get as 1. Then for the n value, we are going to update the value of n. So that is n, the current value of n is 1 and in that by updating plus 1, we will get the current value of n equal to 2. So this is the value, the updated value of the x, this is the value of n. And we have to iterate this till we match this value of n will be less than 100. So as long as this condition is true, we are basically going to iterate this loop. And in that you will see that this is the pattern where every iteration, this n value is getting incremented by one and that we are going to add into the existing value of x. So if you look at the series, this will be something like one plus in the next iteration, n value will be 2. Then in the, after that, the x value will be 3 and 4. So on, it will continue till the value gets 100. And if you perform all the addition of these values, the answer that we have to give, which is nothing but 50-50 will be the answer if you calculate this series. So for the first question, we have the answer, the option A, that is 5050. Now let's move to the second question that we have, where uh, the code is given, like if you want to break it down. So let's say, the i value that is given is 140 and it's a function that we have where it is passing the value of i which is we will pass the value 140 and here's the condition that we have if i mod 2 that is 140 mod 2 if it is true not equal to 0 so if this is it if this is not equal to 0 then only it will return the value but as we can see this is going to be equal to 0 so this condition will be false. The first if condition, it will jump to the else part of the code where we have to return this and it is we are calling another function by the same value with minus one. So what will be that? So i value is 140 minus one, it will be 139. And this 139 we will pass back to the function that we have. In that case, now we will check in the second iteration that i mod 2, which is 139 mod 2 and that we have is not equal to 0. And in that condition, this statement or this statement will be true because it is not equal to 0. There will be one reminder that we are going to get. So in that case, it will return the value of i. And what is the current value of i that we got? It is 139. So that's why the answer that we have is 139. Now let's go to the third question that we have here. We have given a code where basically there are two variables. Now every time when you're solving this question, you see this average each question might take one or two minutes if you're going to solve for the entire iteration. Sometimes you have to do the elimination of the options as well. In that case, we can reach to the optimal question answer in easily format. So basically here we have given some variables where the value of A is given as 2, the value of B that we have is 50. Then the third line is going to be for the conditionals where 
B is basically like 50 is greater than 0, which is true, it will iterate. Then the value of A that we are going to update with B mod 2, that is 50 mod 2 plus the value of current A that we are going to have. So what is the answer that we are going to get here is 0 plus the value of A that we have is 2. So the new value of A is going to be the same, that is 2 only. So here we will have get the value of A that is 2. Next line we have if A mod like uh, while giving it like you might feel that it's syntactically there is no curly braces or there is no indentation uh, understand this is a pseudo code not the actual syntax of the C where uh, you need to consider the instruction and don't look for like uh, the syntactical errors like in terms of indentations or the curly braces okay. So the next condition that we have is A mod 3 is equal to 0 if you want to convert that the value of a that we have is 2 mod 3 is equal to let's say if we compare that in python we do in the equal to like is 0 so in that case it is going to be false it won't uh, it will not be true in that scenario so that's why it will jump and it will go to the else part in the else part what it is printing is b minus 1 so the current value of b like in initial that we have 50 so 50 minus 1 it will print as 49 so the first output that we are going to get is the value 49 now check in the option is there any option which is starting with the 49 and as we can compare all the values there's the only option that we have it is starting for the 49 you can close that question because even if you iterate it was going to take you a while and uh, it will take more one or two minutes and if you solve that definitely you're going to get the series like 49 3 and 1 if you continue like let's say for this instance we have not even looked at it so what will be like 50 the value by 5 you will get the updated value of the b you will get the updated value a plus 1 which is like it will be 3 again you will go back to the loop you will check if the b value is greater than 0 and you will solve for that in that iteration you will get the value 3 and in third iteration you will get the value of 1. So instead of that as we got the first answer which is 49 we will check whether is there any question or any option which is starting from the 49 that will be the answer that I am going to have so that we can mark that okay. So now uh, the next question that we have is like we have this question in that case if you look at it there are some variables where x value is given as 9, y value that we have is 2 and z value is a 6. Okay, so based on that this instruction if you look at closely, we are going to update the value of a by performing this operation. If you know this operation it will be very easy for you. If you don't know how this uh, uh, or operator or x or uh, like and operator works in that case you have to first learn that. So basically whenever we give that these are the bitwise operators that we have so whenever we have a bitwise operator these values we need to convert them into a binary first so what will be the binary version of 9 so it could be like 1001 is what binary we write 9 then 2 is nothing but 0010 and 6 we can write as 0 double one zero so these are the binary representative if you want to just simply do that you can just write 1 2 4 8 16 and let's say if you want to do that for the 9 8 plus 1 will become 9 so this will be your value for 9 if you want to do that for 2 1 0 remaining this will be 0 so 0 0 double 1 0 will be the value of 2 if you want to do for the 6 4 plus 2 is going to be 6 then these remaining zero so this is how we can simply convert any decimal number into the binary so you can continue with this series and you can do that okay so now what operation that we want to perform the first value which is like x that we have 1001 we want to perform the and operation bitwise and with respect to this value y so it will be like 0010 how this operation works is like whenever when both the values are true then only it will evaluate for true otherwise it will be false so in that case this will be false that means 0 0 0 so after performing this operation from 9 and 2 this is what we are getting and on that we want to perform the or operation the value which is like 6 
which is 0, double one, zero that we have. And with the OR operation, if any of the value is true, the resultant or the answer is going to be true. In that case, 0, double one, zero will be the output. And this, if you convert back into the decimal, we are going to get the answer at 6. And that's why your option C is going to be the correct here. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to practice more questions like this, uh, you, you can visit Accenture pseudocode question and answer where you will get the previous year questions on prepinsta.com. This link is given in the description of the video where you can check all the questions from the previous year and you will get to answer this. And with each question, you will get the explanation as well. The link will be in the description. Plus for the people who want to learn or you want to crack the Accenture, we have the dedicated course on the Accenture. You can go to visit prepinstaprime.com In that in the company section, you will see the Accenture module is there. In that module, this covers everything that is required for you for the Accenture, like starting from verbal, logical reasoning, technical assessment, coding, DSA, and post the interview round, like the first round that you're going to give for the technical test. After that, you need to prepare for the interview. In that, it will cover you like HR interview, group discussions, then resume preparation, guesstimates. And there will be many companies are started asking on the questions on the upcoming technologies like full stack or data science. These things will be covered in, into the syllabus. Apart from that, you can pick like the dedicated courses on data science or data analytics or full stack. You have complete freedom of selecting the courses that you want to learn. Plus there will be like for cracking any interview, you need to start with the coding where you can pick the dedicated programming language, either C, C++, Java or Python. And the DSA is covered in all the programming languages. And there you can see like we have separate sections for the each companies that you're preparing, whether you're preparing for TCS, Accenture, Deloitte, so you will get a dedicated syllabus. So if you want to check the Prepinsta Prime, your, the link is given in the description. You can go check out that. All right, so now coming back to the question. So here we have another question where basically uh, we have this question given the value of this variable f, then g, and there's a sum that it is given as zero. Then the conditional that we have is g is greater than f. Let's say if you want to write it. So what is the value? Nine is greater than six, which is true. So it will jump to this statement. And here we have a for loop, which is going to iterate on this sum. Okay. So what is the value that we have? If you want to write the N value is equal to F. That is the first value. It's six, then N equal to six. Then we have N is less than equal to G. That is six is less than equal to nine, which is true. And for each iteration, we are going to increment the value of N with plus one, that is six plus one after performing that iteration. In that, what is exactly happening? The sum is initially zero. Here we are updating the sum variable with the value of n. So that will become sum equal to, initially the sum is zero, the value of n is six. So the answer that we are going to get here as a six after performing this iteration. Then you will go for the second iteration in the for loop. Now we are going to update the value of n with one based on this condition that we have. So the n value will become seven. Then we will check if seven is less than equal to nine. Still it is true. And we will update seven plus one. And that n value we are going to add in the existing value of the sum. So we will get the answer here. Then we will update, we will iterate one more time. And in that we will see the next value that we have is eight then eight is less than equal to nine. And the last iteration eight plus one, we will update after performing this and you will increment this already existing. Let's say we have completed this here. We are going to add this eight also. And in that case, uh, the next iteration that we have n value will be nine, nine less than nine will be false. So we will not continue with the another iteration. The final answer that we are going to get is six plus seven plus eight. So that answer will be 21 that you can compute. So the option A is the correct answer. So that's why if there is an error, otherwise you will print the error. But in that, this condition is will satisfy till the G value is F that we have. And we will iterate through the fall group. And the answer that we want to get here is the sum value that we are going to get as a 21.
All right, so here we have another question where basically we have this variables A, B, C, D, and E. In that, you can see that few variables like A value we have like 50, then variable B is we have 3, variable C we have 3. For the variables who has D and E, we don't have any such values, so initially we will declare them as 0. So th that is D will be 0, E will be 0. Since because we have these values where basically we do not have any code in a proper syntax. These are the instructions we need to write them. Okay, so basically here uh, this doesn't make sense. This is like we have a following pseudocode only. And uh, while the value like from this iteration, if we start to make C value that is 3 is greater than 0, which is true. So we will do the first iteration that we will update in the variable of the D that is A mod B value of A that we have is 50 then uh, it's going to be mod the value of B is 3. So we will get the answer we will update that into a variable D that we are going to update. Okay after that the next instruction that we have how we are going to set the value of E is E is equal to initially it is 0 plus the value of d that we get here that is we are going to add and plus the value of a is nothing but 50. If you perform this operation here we will get the updated value of the e. Okay then after that we are going to decrement the value of c with minus 1. So initially the c value is 3 minus 1 it will be 2 and again you will compare if this 2 is greater than 0 you will do the iterations. So this is what the logic that we have to solve this question. Do solve this till all the iteration and let us know in the comments what will be the answer for this question. All right. So the, for the people who are going to get this question correctly, top three commenters will get the v, like Prepinsa Prime subscription for free of cost. And do let us know if this video, the question that we have solved for helpful for you or not. And if you like the video, do let me know in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel if you are new to this. And as I said, there are more than 30 plus companies are hiring this placement season. If you want all the updates, make sure that you follow us on LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Discord, Instagram and Telegram. All the links are given in the description. For more such videos, do let us know. We are going to come up with the videos on uh, aptitude coding. So I will see you up ahead in the next one.